Welcome to Trip Talk. I'm Jennifer Napier Pierce with the Salt Lake Tribune. Whether upscale, fine dining, casual eatery, or greasy spoon, eating out is truly one of life's great pleasures. And getting paid to eat out and write about it seems like a dream job. But but sizing up a restaurant's ambiance and service, taste, texture, presentation, writing about that experience in excruciating detail takes more than a healthy appetite. Today on Trip Talk, we're talking with food writers about their passion, their favorite Utah eateries, the ins and outs of reviewing restaurants, as well as lar larger local food trends. Joining me on the Google Hangout now is Salt Lake Tribune food writer, Kathy Stevenson. Kathy, hello. Hi, how are you? Great, and especially <laughs> since we're talking about food, because I love food, and we're talking with two independent critics for the Salt Lake Tribune, uh, Heather King, uh, she is a food critic here, she's a writer at, um, who is on the Twitter handle SLC Lunches, um, and she also runs a group called Ladies Who Lunch at SLC, um, and you cannot see her face because we've blacked it out so that she can re remain anonymous, but Heather, I'm assured that you're there, hello. Yes, Jennifer, thanks so much for having me. Also with us is Stuart Melling. He's a, a freelance restaurant reviewer here at the Tribune, a member of the Association of Food Journalists. And Stuart is also joining us in uh, um, sort of anonymous fashion. Stuart, are you there? I'm here in incognito mode, yes. Thanks for having me, Jennifer. <laughs> Thank you both very much for being here. And we invite um, our viewers to join us uh, our conversation today. Where do you go out to eat and why? Uh, what recommendations do you have? and what do you expect from restaurant reviews. Um, and if you've ever wanted to know what goes on inside the brain of a food critic, now's your chance. Send your questions and comments along to the hashtag TribTalk on Twitter and Google+. You can also leave them in the comments section of our page at sltrib.com. Um, before we get into your top restaurant picks, uh, Heather and Stuart, um, I just want to ask the question, how did you get to be a food critic. This is really a plum assignment. Heather, you first. Okay. Well, I um, I'm actually trained in as a writer, and uh, my first job out of college, I was actually I worked at Salt Lake Magazine, and the crappy job I got was to run the dining guide. <laughs> so um, <laughs> from then, I just kind of that that spawned a love of food, and um, I was lucky enough to meet Kathy Stevenson at Ladies Who Lunch, mm -hmm. and uh, when the opportunity came open, she asked me if I'd like to apply for this job, so it's all about networking. <laughs> it's a sweet gig. Stuart, how'd you get roped in? Um, I don't actually have a background in professional writing. I'm actually a computer science major. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and years and years ago, I started my little blog, and then when the opportunity came up at the trip, to um, full of vacancy, those guys had. They invited me to come in, and we had a chat, and I started right up the trip. That was about two years ago. Terrific. Describe the mechanics of the job. Like, how many times do you go to an establishment? Are you taking notes while you're eating? That's kind of conspicuous. How, how do you keep it undercover, Stuart? Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I was reading an article in the New York Times a few weeks ago, and they were talking about in the 90s, they used to run off into the bathrooms and take notes, take notes. get in the cubicles during the meal. Uh, these days, I, I just try and cram as much in my head as possible. Um, you know, we have multiple visits, so each time you, you know, we soak up a bit more data and get home and write it down. And Heather, is there, uh, give us your technique. Well, fortunately, because of smartphones and the popularity of Instagram and Twitter and everything else, everyone is taking pictures of their food. So I take lots of pictures of my food, but so does everyone else. So it's actually more inconspicuous if I take pictures than if I don't. But we do always visit a restaurant at least twice, and um, we try to go for different meals if they serve different meals. Um, different times of the week, like a weeknight and a weekend, just to make sure that you know the service is on point for both, um, and and get as much of a feel for the restaurants as we possibly can. Hmm. And, and what specifically are you looking for how, when you're doing this sort of evaluation? Well, we do have star ratings um, for uh, different parts of the review itself. So the food is obviously the most critical, and that gets. Uh, the biggest criteria, if you will, but you know, there's also the environment, the price. Um, we take all that into consideration in terms of coming up with our final overall star review. 
Hmm. Uh, Stuart, what's the highest rating that you've ever given, and and where was it? Um, <laughs> I'm kind of really um, harsh on stars. <laughs> I don't think I've ever <laughs> given more than three. Um, I'm always a bit hesitant to give four just in case something else comes along, which is you know that much better. Um, some of the better places um, I really enjoyed. Um, Thinker, I think they had one of my highest um, star ratings. Um, That's in uh, Salt Lake City. Yeah, they're a tapas restaurant. I really like those guys. Um, they were probably one of the highest ones I gave. Um, off the top of my head, I can't remember the many of the star ratings I gave, but I don't think I've ever given more than three. Mm. And Heather, how about you? Um, I did recently give a three and a half to Centro Pizzeria in Cedar City, but before that, I had only given three. So I I would agree that I'm probably fairly harsh, but again, I'm always kind of looking out for you know what is the next amazing place that is going to really 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 deserve a four star. All right. Uh, speaking with restaurant reviewers Heather King and Stuart Melling, along with Tribune food writer Kathy Stevenson, we're talking about food, uh, the local food scene here in Utah. What do you want to know about reviewing restaurants? Where are your favorite places to go to eat and why? You can send your questions and comments along to the hashtag TripTalk on Twitter and Google+. Plus. Also, leave them in the comment section of our page at sltrib.com. Uh, Kathy Stevenson, you look a lot at food trends. Um, more local restaurants are, are, are touting their locally grown ingredients, but it, it's not always smooth sailing, and, and you wrote about a, a complication with a small egg farm um, in today's paper. Uh, tell us what's going on there. Uh, there's a, a egg farmer in Provo, uh, her, uh, Clifford Family Farms, the owner's Julie Clifford, and she has been selling uh, her farm fresh eggs for about a decade uh, with, with really no problems. Uh, then this week she went to um, a couple of her customers, um, restaurants and grocers particularly, and they said, sorry, the, the health department and the agricultural department have said, we can't sell your eggs, you're not inspected. She calls and talks to the feds and they say, well, you're too small, you only have 1,700 chickens and we only um, inspect farms that have 3,000 or more. So they said, call your state. And the state, she called the state, and they said, oh, we don't, ha we don't do inspections. So she's really kind of caught in this catch-22. Hey, uh, my big customers in the winter, restaurants and uh, grocery stores can't sell my eggs but because they don't have inspections, but there's nobody to inspect my eggs. So <laughs> she's really kind of caught in the middle. That, that's difficult for, for, I mean, the restaurants love it because they're locally grown. They know exactly what the farmers are doing, and yet... Um, there's a layer of uh, red, red tape red there, tape. right? Red tape. Um, I think they're trying to work it out. The agriculture department, you know, realizes this is kind of a, this is a bad situation to be in. Um, but, and so they're working it out. But in between, she has chickens still laying eggs. Um, I think her um, uh, individual customers, because they can still buy the eggs from her, they can go to her farm, or they can go to the winter market that starts this Saturday at the, um, the Rio Grande Depot, they can probably go there and buy them from her, so she'll uh, maybe buy an extra dozen or two to kind of keep up the, keep her uh, from overflowing with eggs, but um, I think she's kind of just caught in the middle waiting. Oh, that's, that's a tough story, but a good story for you yeah, to report. Yeah. Um, another thing that I've seen um, some whisperings about um, is the location of restaurants, particularly here in, in Salt Lake City where you've got neighborhoods and they want to attract sort of this walk-in traffic. I understand Avenue's Bistro in Salt Lake City is um, sort of under scrutiny from its neighbors mm -hmm. who, who don't like the noise. I mean, it's always difficult to, to balance the needs of neighbors who live there. Uh, with the parking and the commotion that comes with a restaurant. I actually talked to Kathy Chadbourne yesterday about this issue um, and basically she was allowed to do to have the patio until somebody complains and then that's when the city steps in because they don't have enough enforcement officers to go around and police everybody. They wait for a complaint and so somebody complained and said it's too noisy so now you have to close. Um, so it's really um, a really a catch-22 for her too. Uh, the patio she said in the summer pretty much doubles her seating and helps her survive the whole year. Without that seating she's in trouble. Um, so it, she'll ha she does have an opportunity to go to the city and get a variance but you know city government takes a while that could take six or eight months so um, I think she's really worried about trying to make it through. 
Mm-hmm. I imagine uh, other neighborhoods are sort of struggling with that mm-hmm. coexistence of, you know, the the urban chicken uh, yes. farmer <laughs> and uh, next to, you know, some uh, an apartment building where people want to live yes. and have a little bit of peace and quiet. It's it's difficult. It's we're we're so um, we're so urban now, but so many people want to have the benefits of the rural lifestyle. They want to have chickens. They want to have a garden. They want to be able to walk to their neighborhood restaurant. And and those are two competing forces all the time um, for people in the city. And you mm. know even maybe uh, suburbs. Hmm. Speaking with Tribune reporter Kathy, Kathy Stevenson, also with us, restaurant critics Heather King and Stuart Melling, and we're talking about food, local food trends, and your picks for top restaurants in the state of Utah. If you'd like to send your thoughts or, or questions along to hashtag TribTalk on Twitter or Google+, you can also put them at uh, sltrib.com. I want to get to a few comments. Um, this from Guru Number 1, I'd enjoy hearing each panelist's top two favorite barbecue joints in <laughs> northern Utah and the tri-state corner area. Top of Utah, southeast Idaho, and southwest Wyoming. And in response to that, um, Dan76 writes, my vote goes to Holy Smoke Barbecue in Layton for a Utah kid. Jeff smokes a great brisket. Um, so Heather, uh, good barbecue joints up in the northern part of the state. Do you have any picks? That, that will be a quick one for me because, no, I have no idea of any barbecue <laughs> restaurants in any of that area. I could give you my favorite Salt Lake one, but none in top of Utah, unfortunately. Okay. Tell us what you've got for Salt Lake City. Uh, I definitely say my number one is R&R Barbecue, followed closely by Kaiser's Barbecue. Okay. And Stuart? You know, um, exactly the same as Heather. I don't actually get out of Salt Lake City, uh, much to the north anyway, but um, R&R. But head and shoulders above everybody else in time. Um, beyond that, I really used to enjoy Sugar House Barbecue, but I haven't been back to those guys since they changed location after the trolley car move down there in Sugar House. What about Pat's? Come on, Pat's is an institution. Uh, that, that, that's on my list. I like Pat's, uh, partly just because of the location and the atmosphere. Um, it's just kind of a cool way to dine, I think. The live music. Uh, this on yeah. Facebook. Um, Jeff Payer writes, he can't join us, but his favorite is M's. Uh, thoughts on M's, uh, Stuart? Um, I know they have a great local following. Um, it, it's up in I've the Capitol them. Hill area, right? Yeah, I've never been myself, but I know they have um, get a lot of kudos of people locally. Um, yeah. And Heather? Heather? Uh, yes, actually, I just had lunch there maybe about a month or two ago and was reminded how charming and wonderful it actually is. Um, you know, the parking is a little bit of a challenge. They do have some parking there, but, it, you know, it's just one of those things that it's off the beaten path enough that you forget about it, and it is one of those places that you really shouldn't forget about. So I'm kind of encouraging people to go there for, you know, holiday lunches and things like that because it is such a charming place with some really great food. Um, this from uh, Kim McDaniel, who's our, our digital director here at Trib. Um, she, her vote is for Valter's Osteria because of the amazing food, but also because Valter is so hands-on and treats his customers like family. Um, Heather, do you have thoughts on on Valter and Valter's Osteria? I, I absolutely adore Valter. He's quite a kick in the pants. Um, I first met him when he owned Il Sanzavino many, many long time ago, over a decade. Um, I actually haven't been to Osteria because I don't have that kind of money. Fortunately, <laughs> fortunately the Tribune paid for Stuart to go, so I'll let Stuart talk about his <laughs> Oh Well, thank you. Um, yeah, I personally, I wasn't too impressed. Um, much of the menu it was quite nice food, and... Um, some of the service is okay, but at the price point, for me personally, those guys, what they were charging, they just didn't match up. I mean, I had one meal which was over 200 bucks, um, but for two people, I think. Kathy, we, had... we paid 200 <laughs> bucks for him to go to. <laughs> we do. I, I, I hope people realize that the Tribune does pay for all the meals. We, uh, in addition to paying them for their writing, the Tribune covers the costs of the meals, and so we feel like that makes us a little bit more objective. We're not uh, biased about, oh, we got free food. We got to write something really nice about this place. Uh, yeah, I've, um, I've never met Volta. I'm sure he's a lovely guy. Um, I don't know what more to say on that. My two trips that I really <laughs> didn't enjoy. <laughs> I, I, I would, I'm with Stuart. You know, I, I have a husband. I call him the everyman. And 
uh, Walters didn't pass the everyman test. He was a little too uncomfortable and didn't feel like he fit in. So uh, Art, we uh, we kind of feel the same way about uh, Walters. Well, but he has a great following. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that he place does. Seems packed every night. So I mean, you know, great for that. Yeah. Okay. And uh, this from Thomas Camoyne. Um, his vote is for Tandor on Thirty Third um, Indian Place. I'm assuming I haven't been there. Anyone know anything Stuart, about Tandor? Stuart, 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 Stuart. <laughs> Stuart is our Indian food expert. All right, Stuart. Yeah, it's one of my favorite cuisines. I think I read somewhere once there's more curry houses in London than there are fish and chip shops. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's close to my heart. Yeah, Tando's really good. The guys are really nice. It's um, a really nice atmosphere in there. A lot of um, ethnic restaurants um, can be at, what, not horrible decor, but Tando really put a lot of money into the decor. It's a really nice decor. The staff's really cool. The food's excellent. Um, it's really reasonable priced, and those guys just opened a second place um, close to downtown, Cockball, which is another great restaurant too. Is that the one on Six South? It is, yeah. That's really okay. good. Okay, okay, terrific. You know, the diversity of cuisine along the Wasatch Front has has just exploded in the past few years that I've noticed. I mean, we've long had Mexican and Chinese, but you've got Thai and Vietnamese, vegetarian, Indian. I mean, the list is expanding. I, I guess I'd ask each of you, what's still missing um, from what you would find on the coast? What What are you hoping will come to this market at some point uh, in the near future? Heather? Um, well, my husband will be very happy that I answer. Um, we're desperately in need of a real donor kebab shop. And I know mm. that Spitz has recently opened, but it does not pass the authentic European test. Um, so I think we're missing donor kebab. Um, we're missing. We're also missing like a great Cuban restaurant, like where to get really good Cubans. But beyond that, my gosh, we really, really cover the bases. Considering what a, a small, large city we are, sure. I'm I'm amazed at the ethnic diversity we have in restaurants. Stuart. Yeah, I'd agree with Heather. We have pretty much everything. Personally, um, for me, one thing I find missing. Which is really interesting, considering we have so much sushi, and therefore so much, you know, like fish in the state for a desert. Um, there's no really, really exceptional seafood restaurant in town, not for my money. Uh, like a really good chef-driven restaurant that focuses purely on seafood. Kathy, what do you want? What do you crave? <laughs> what do I crave? You know, I I think we have a really great mix of restaurants, and I think a lot of people. Um, who um, have traveled the world in Utah, they, they go on LDS missions and they like to come back and, and they're a little bit more experimental than I think people give us credit for. You know, they'll, they'll go try um, ethnic restaurants um, uh, because they've eaten it in another country and so they want to come and, and they want to speak the language with the owners and, and so I think, I think we're a little more adventurous than people give us credit for. Hmm. I uh, for my vote Turkish. We don't have a good Turkish. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, uh, this from Twitter, the virtual psalm. Um, the restaurant favorite is where I work, the Copper Onion. Others include Palette and Finca. Um, this from Kelly Nakagama on Twitter. My favorite Salt Lake City restaurants are Pago, Finca, Aristos, Naked Fish, and Copper Onion. Um, any of those in the group that um, sort of rise up above the others for for your palate, uh, Heather? Um, absolutely. I, I along with Stuart, I really, really appreciate Finca and what they're doing at Finca Tapas. Um, just a great vibe, great atmosphere amazing bartender with cocktails that are absolutely fantastic. Um, Naked Fish has just launched their uh, new ramen only lunch menu which I tried last week and um, I think that's really kind of stepping it up downtown. That's that's a great little block area of food right there so I'm happy to see that they're sort of coming around again. Um, gosh, I those those are two good ones for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Stuart, in that grouping, um, uh, do you have a favorite? Oh yeah, I can't give enough praise to Naked Fish. I met the owner uh, a couple of months ago, and it was, it was meant to be like a ten-minute talk, and it ended up being like a two-hour conversation. The guy, Johnny Kwan, um, he's so committed to like it's like quality and precision, and it's just really exceptional guy. It's the stuff they'll be doing over the next year or two is it's mm. going to be really cool. Speaking with uh, restaurant critics Heather King, Stuart Melling, also Tribune uh, food writer Kathy Stevenson. We're talking about food and if you've got some recommendation, recommendations, some hot tips for people on where to eat 
tonight. It is the weekend. <laughs> um, you can uh, send your questions to the hashtag TribTalk on Twitter and Google Plus, or leave them in the comment section at sltrib.com. Um, oh my, this is from. Uh, D. Christian Harrison. He's got a whole long list. Okay, you ready? <laughs> um, uh, burgers and brews, hard to beat the garage and Poplar Grove. For nachos, he goes to the Green Pig. For, for bruschetta, he goes to Maxwell's. For dinner, to Ava. Uh, for lunch, Carlucci's. The list keeps going. <laughs> He's got all sorts of food trucks. I mean, there are a lot of people who feel so passionate about food. Obviously, you share the passion. Um, what got you roped in, uh, Kathy Stevenson? Uh, uh, well, I come from a nice big Greek family, so cooking is something we do all the time. So, you know, I love food. I, I grew up on a farm. I, you know, my, I always tell people my first job was picking zucchini on my grandfather's farm. So, you know, cooking and food is really part of my heritage. Um, and, you know, being a journalist and being able to combine the two is, is really a great, a great job. Mm -hmm. So, um... Christian Harrison winds down his recommendation saying each of these places evidences a love for the food and a love for the customer. I mean, that's really what it is. You can have the best gourmet chef in the kitchen, but if you don't serve it with some sort of uh, caring for the person who's paying for it, I mean, that matters, right, Heather? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The passion that some of the chefs and owners have, um, and on that list, you know, the garage is great. I, I missed Aristos in Kelly's list, but, you know, they're absolutely amazing. Love the Greek food. Um, there are so many restaurants and owners and chefs here in Salt Lake that do have so much passion, and they could probably do so many other things and make more money and have a better lifestyle, but that food just draws them in and brings them back, and it's, it's the thing that keeps us all together and keeps us excited and talking all the time. So, you know, we have to eat three times a day, so why not enjoy every single meal? You know, when you're eating out, though, I mean, it, it's hard to count calories. If you've ever been on a diet, it's like, <laughs> oh, my goodness, I can't tell. Um, how do you guys who eat for a living keep the weight in check? Um, Stuart? Um, that's a very good question, one I haven't figured out yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, basically, I need to um, exercise a whole lot more. <laughs> Thankfully, I have a decent <laughs> metabolism, so it just, I don't pile the pounds on too much. But it's it's done to it's done together. <laughs> I mean, it, it's got to be a challenge, Heather. It really is. You know, people ask me how often I eat out a week, and on average, I'm I'm eating out 15 times a week, which wow. is kind of crazy. I know it sounds like wow, that would be awesome, but sometimes it's a bit of a chore. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, I've gained 20 pounds since I started working for the trip, so <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm still working on that as well, but that's okay. It, it gives me something, you know, again, everybody I take is, has got to be the best quality and value for my caloric intake, so. you got to choose carefully. Um, Kathy, as important as the, what's on the plate, as sometimes as what's in the glass, you've been reporting a lot on liquor and uh, the, the dearth of liquor licenses. I mean, how is that affecting uh, local restaurants? Are they concerned that you know, they're not able to, to serve a full range if they can't get their hands on a license? Oh, absolutely. Um, it, it's really kind of depressing to go to the DABC meetings and, and there's a list of, you know, 10 or 12 uh, businesses that want to have a club license and there's no club licenses around. So um, here they are trying to have a business and they can't do it. The restaurant liquor licenses are a little bit easier to get, but when you get them, um, there's the Zion curtain that you have to deal with, and that and that's an extra expense, and it's something that other states don't have to deal with, and so it does it puts the puts pressure on the restaurants to try and meet the state laws, um, and then still try and serve customers the way they want to be able to serve them. Hmm. Uh, here's a, a comment um, on sltrib.com from Isaac Draxler. I need a great funky place. <laughs> Moved from Phoenix, where I love Chino Bandito and Pita Jungle. I need help, please. Um, so, do you? I, I'm not sure what he means by funky, but um, I guess that means uh, food that is a little bit unconventional. Um, Stuart, do you have a recommendation for Isaac? Uh, the first thing that popped in my mind was uh, Sushi Groove um, in the Highland area, just off Sugar House on Highland Drive. Sorry, they the whole place is covered in kind of like graffiti art. They have like a DJ or a band playing most nights. It's like really cramped in the 
really intimate. It gets really loud. And it's, they're not authentic Japanese guys, they're local guys, but they're really, you know, they make some really creative um, sushi rolls. They even have like a whole dessert menu of um, dessert rolls. It's really creative, really funky, really groovy. It's really cool. Okay, funky. Um, what's the price point there? You know, it's pretty reasonable. Um, it's mid range, it's not super cheap, like some of the budget joints, and it's not high end, it's just casual. It's good. Okay, good. Heather, a uh, funky place for you? Well, you know, I, funky is probably not the right word, but I do have to say I love, like, Lucky 13 in the garage for, you know, li just, like, big, juicy, crazy burgers. They're kind of, like, dive bar-y. They, you know, the garage is not necessarily dive bar, but they have live music, um, you know, but it's kind of North Salt Lake. It's a little bit off the beaten path. I just like the, I like the places where you have to work a little bit in order to find them and enjoy them. Best onion rings, lucky thirteen. That's my vote. Kathy, um, <laughs> do you have a funky pick? I uh, yeah, I I have two. Um, the and Stuart and Heather gonna have to help me with this. Is it Oh My on State Street? Oh My, the Bon Me uh -huh. place. Yeah, yeah. I love, yeah, I I always send people there because I think it's unexpected and it's and it's on part of State Street that you might not expect. But um, I always think that's a fun place to go. And then um, for Mexican food, there's Chungas. It's down kind of west, um, but they have some great uh, food, family owned um, food too. So I yeah, those are my two picks. Chunga's Ninth West and mm, Fourth yeah, South, six, or six, yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's, on the corner. Like that. it's a little divey place, but I like it. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, this is uh, from Steve Pastorino on Twitter. My favorites: Farm at Canyons, Lucky Thirteen, Setabello. Loved Cucina Toscana, but haven't tried Walter's new one. So, um, what's Farm at the Canyons? Anyone? Uh, yeah, sure. No. Um. So it's uh right at the bottom of the gondola at the canyons. Um. It was sort of the the first restaurant to open up in the canyons area. It's been open for quite a while now. Their their focus is really on locally sourced, um, all ingredients. Really, I believe that they try and keep everything within a 250 mile range. If I'm not um, mistaken. So, great restaurant. Um, I believe that they have a new chef, and I haven't been there since they got a new chef, so can't really speak to it as of late. Okay. Uh, do, do you have anything to add, Stuart, on the on that list? Uh, Farm, Lucky 13, Setabello? Uh, no, um, I really, really like Lucky 13. Um, I think those guys are awesome, but I think I think everyone knows about those guys now. I think. <laughs> uh, responding to Funky, uh, Virtual Psalm says Tin Angel Cafe, Tin Angel. which is oh, uh, that's a great one. Um, where do you guys eat when you're off the clock? Is it dependent on the budget, or is it uh, for special occasions? You, I mean, Heather, you eat out 15 times a week. That's crazy. Yes, so, yes, it is. I mean. <laughs> Are you able to eat out for fun anymore? <laughs> I, I do. Fortunately, um, I, I do have a, another real full-time job, and part <laughs> of that job is actually to take clients out to lunch. So I'm often, again, on the clock eating, but for another company. Um, and so we're right downtown. So um, probably like my fallback favorites, I absolutely um, love Eva's Bakery, Boulangerie. I'm at Bombara quite often. They have a great like $12 powered lunch, but it's such a nice atmosphere. I really enjoy that. Those um, chips with the blue cheese. Oh, oh. to die for. <laughs> Say no more. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Tin Angel, that's always a great one. Um, they're just so nice there. I love them. I, I do love the funky atmosphere. Um, Dojo over right over by Rio Grande. Um, I like the feel of their sushi and Kelly's really trying hard to make that a go. Mm. Um, yeah, I could go on and on and on. I'm I'm lucky to work downtown, so I have so many options all the time. Hmm. Stuart, how about you? Yeah, it goes back to what you said earlier about um, the whole team at a restaurant making, you know, the whole picture. You'll always find me at Kathmandu, the mm. Indian restaurant, and just because those guys are so nice, so super friendly, and you can go in there and chat to them. But I've been going since they opened, and they we all know each other know by name, and I can go in there and relax and I don't have to, you know, think about things too much. <laughs> I really like it on that. It's a really good place. Uh, that's on 2nd South, right? 7th East? Yeah, they have one downtown and they have one um, in the Sugar House area as well. 
Okay, which great, is Kathy. Kathy, you you've got a uh, a husband who is uh, who wants some comfort food. Uh, where do you go to relax when you're not thinking about food? Well, you know, uh, that's the joy of being the food writer, not the restaurant critic. I get to cook at home, so I I love to cook at home, and so. Uh, and my husband and I, it's a little bit of a hobby. So uh, we definitely get to cook at home. So I get to do all the shopping at all the fun markets. So I get to, you know, go out to the, the Mexican markets or the uh, Asian markets and find new ingredients and, um, you know, bakeries and whatever. So I get to do the little different end of the cooking. Um, I get to cook at home. So that's how I get to stay skinnier. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm curious, um, do you ever revisit a restaurant that you re you've reviewed. I mean both of you, I mean you're pay paid to be critical so obviously you're going to point out some things where improvements can be made. Have you ever gone back to a restaurant that you reviewed to see if they actually fixed anything? Um, Stuart? Not necessarily to see if they fixed anything but if I really enjoyed a place I'll, I'll go back now and then. It's kind of difficult though with the amount of places we have reviewed mm -hmm. and then the multiple visits so my wife's always complaining because she often comes with me to, you know, to eat, to mm -hmm. order more dishes to eat more food, and she always complains. You know, can we go back there? And I'm like, no, no, we got to go here now. <laughs> so, yeah, it's tough. Um, Heather, what about you? I mean, have you revisited a place where you thought, you know, what if they just did this or just added this on the plate, it would have been a much better experience? Um, actually, no. If if I didn't love them, and I mean, I am critical, so there's always something that could use improvement. But if I didn't love them when I reviewed it. I don't have time to go back to the places that you know need to change things, but I I often revisit places that I loved and you know regularly go. Up until recently, Zai was one of those places I would always take clients there. Um, I love Del Mar, um, so there. Where's oh that? My. Um, it's it's um, on. It's right over. It's by the RC Willie, just off the Twenty First South and Third ah, yes. West, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by the Home Depot and um, Ceviche. Awesome, awesome place in this crazy little strip mall strip business mall, yeah. strip mall. It, I love that place. Um, so I'll go back to places that I fell in love with. Oh my, is another one of my favorites. But mm -hmm. if I if they needed to improve, I don't have time to go back there, unfortunately, because. I've got so many others on my list. Boy, those restaurants better be on their toes then. Again, <laughs> uh, we're speaking with food critics uh, Heather King and Stuart Melling, also food writer Kathy Stevenson. Um, this comment from Sanctimony, are there any good tapas restaurants in Salt Lake City? Had a fantastic dinner at Firefly in Vegas, but that's a bit of a drive. Uh, <laughs> you have some, some tapas favorites. I've, I've heard uh, Finca a number of times. Any others on your list, uh, Stuart? Yeah, it's quite trendy these days. I think a lot of restaurants around town kind of throw out um, a little tapas menu here and there. I know Tin Angel have done it. Um, Finca for me is number one. Um, I think Faustina just started a new small plates menu, I heard, um, yesterday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's loads of places, but tapas, tapas, in the traditional sense, probably mm -hmm. Cafe Madrid, um, but I haven't been there in years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Heather? Um, I was actually going to add Cafe Madrid to Finca. Um, their new, new location of Cafe Madrid is absolutely beautiful. And, and where is um, that? Uh, it is uh, in Holiday, so it must be on, on Highland Drive. Highland Drive. On Highland Drive. Highland Drive. Yeah. So just past the, just south of maybe Cottonwood 50. Mall. Well, the stuff. old Cottonwood Mall. Yeah. Um, so they're really like the original tapas place here in Salt Lake, but um, since Finca has come on the market, I think they've given them a run for their money for traditional Spanish style tapas. Okay, Sanctimony, Finca, Cafe Madrid are top picks. Um, this comment from Hillary Campbell Pavia, uh, what's the best place for a special occasion dinner that is worth the price? Um, so if you know that you've got to blow the wad on something, uh, where should people go, Heather? Um, certainly Forage is going to be very, very top of the list. Um, it's going to take a while to get a reservation, but if you have a special occasion, you probably know that in advance. Um, you know, we've kind of left out Park City a little bit, and I really it's like to... a question on Twitter. Uh, thoughts on the dining scene in Park City? Well, Park City is kind of the place I go for my special events because, you know, it is a little more special. I get to go out of the way a little bit. Um, a, a true standby fallback for me is Dine Erickson at Deer Valley. Um, I really like the restaurants at Montage, Dailies, um, and 
Apex. Um, so a lot of the resorts have some amazing things. There are some great places on Main Street itself. If you're seeing me talking, you're seeing my picture. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a little appetizer from Shabu, which is in Park City, which is absolutely fantastic. So mm -hmm. um, let's not forget about the great, great food in Park City. Kathy Stevenson, where do you go for a special occasion? Uh, well, this year for our anniversary, we went to the J&G Grill at the St. Regis, and um, part of the fun is you get to ride that funicular up to the restaurant, and it nice. has beautiful views, so that that was beautiful. Um, Stein Erickson would be on my list as well, so, uh, and it, really Park City, uh, we just recently, um, you said Stuart was a member of AFJ, Association of Food Journalists, and um, Heather and I are both members as well, and we just had a food writers conference in Park City there, so we had plenty of food to eat in Park City for all the food writers from around the country. So. Nice, nice. Stuart, where do you go when it's uh, a special occasion? Uh, my favorite place over the years has been Bambara in the Hotel Monaco that uh, Heather mentioned earlier. Those guys have been just doing great stuff for years and years through different chefs, but I've always really enjoyed the meals there. And they've, even though the chefs have changed, the kind of the management and the service team have been pretty static. So you know it's they're doing good things when the whole team has been really consistent for years. What about Log Haven? <laughs> I love, love, love Log Haven. <laughs> Dave Jones is one of my favorite people. Um, Ian Campbell, who's the general manager there, he and I worked together when I was in college. So and and Faith is awesome. So we're actually planning my my company Christmas party there. So it it can't be beat in terms of the beauty of the place. And Dave Jones will turn out some amazing food. I'm sure he always does. And there's no cell phone signal up there, so yes. you're going to have a really secluded time. Now, plus, <laughs> for a romantic dinner. Yeah. Um, I, I wish I could ask you where you're dining tonight, but I don't think I better go there. Um, if I were to go out tonight, <laughs> where should I go, um, uh, Kathy? Oh, tonight? Um, you know, I just went to Kachina Vanina out in Cottonwood, and we just had a lovely dinner. Uh, Vanina, the owner, is there all the time, and she might even serve you. So um, casual but lovely Italian food. So uh, that's my recommendation, just because I just ate there and loved it. Kachina. Okay. Stuart, where am I going tonight? Uh, for no particular reason other than it popped in my head, I'd tell you to go to Frida Bistro. Um, ah, Frida. Yeah. Really beautiful dining space, some you know, really creative takes on modern Mexican cuisine. You won't find a burrito on the menu. Just really uh, pretty, creative dishes. Okay, and Heather? Well, I, I'd like to throw in a word for Cucina Venina as well. The next mm -hmm. Ladies Who Lunch is going to be at Cucina Venina, and that's in my neighborhood, so that's actually my hometown eats. Um, I think I will also throw the hat in the ring for Alamexo. Um, that's the the restaurant that has replaced Zai, um, same owner, Chef Matt, and um, I think it's going to give Frida Bistro a little bit of a run for its money. So, and that's on State Street. Yes, State okay. and maybe 250 South. Okay, there you have it. That's our, our food critics. Uh, Kath, uh, Kathy Stevenson is our food writer. <laughs> Heather King and Stuart Melling, food critics for the Salt Lake Tribune. Thank you all very much for the time today. I appreciate it. Thanks, Jennifer. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you very much. And find a lot more food reviews, restaurant reviews, food trend stories at sltrib.com. I'm Jennifer Napier-Pierce. Thanks so much for tuning into Trib Talk today. Have a great weekend.